morning. Good morning to all of you, to you here in Helsinki and to you following this event through the live stream all over the world. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to open this special event. The synthesis report published today is the most extensive evidence-based review of the impacts the arts and culture can have on our health. The report finally confirms that the arts and culture are linked to well-being, health and social inclusion. This shows how cultural capital can really be the key to experiencing the meaningfulness and significance of life. This report also shows how the arts and culture can prevent illnesses and social problems. In addition, we know now that it makes sense to use art to support rehabilitation. The Health Evidence Network Synthesis Report has examined over 900 evidence-based studies on the effects of the arts on health and well-being. According to the report, art has beneficial impacts on health promotion, the prevention of mental and physical illnesses, the treatment of acute and chronic illnesses also. Art can also help curb the rise in healthcare costs. The research data on the economic impact relates, among other things, to the direct and indirect employment effects of the art and culture, as, as well as to the effects that increase economic attractiveness and vitality. However, I would like to see more results on the economic impact of the use of art in the healthcare and social welfare sector, particularly as part of preventive action. In the world where money talks, this is very important team. And let me share with you some experiences from Finland. In our thinking, the arts and culture have become an important part of the promotion of well-being and health through long-term cross-sectoral cooperation that has lasted for several, several government terms. Our focus is on the realization of people's cultural rights on the benefit of the arts for society and new opportunities for artists. One of the key projects of the previous government program was to expand in cooperation with healthcare and social welfare the principle of investing up to 1% of the constru construction costs of public buildings in the acquisition of artwork. The aim of this scheme was to establish the arts as part of normal activities of the healthcare and social welfare sector. Normal, nothing extra or luxury. One year ago, ministers from Ministry of Social Affairs and Health and the Ministry of Education and Culture jointly issued recommendations to municipalities and regions on the use of arts in the healthcare and social welfare sector. And these recommendations were an important step in making use of artistic activities in the comprehensive care of people. Regions and municipalities are encouraged to draw up objectives for promoting the effects of the arts and culture on well-being. They are also encouraged to appoint a public official who is responsible for cultural well-being. In addition, 
dedicated, dedicated sum for the arts and culture should be systemically included in the budget for healthcare and social welfare. In addition, the new Act on Municipal Provision of Cultural Activities lays down regulations on the municipality's duty to promote the arts and culture as part of residents' health and well-being, inclusion and community engagement, and local and regional vitality. Dear friends of cultural capital and, and well-being, Based on the evidence of the research outcomes published today, I would strongly encourage all decision makers to include artistic activities in the work they do to promote health and well-being. Without taking art and culture seriously and making them integrated part in services and physical surroundings, it's not possible to achieve our objectives in social and health sectors. To sum it up, we need more cultural capital for our well-being, both at individual as well at community and national level. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Kosonen. Uh, next, we, ha we will have a pre-recorded pre message uh, by Piriska Östling, who is uh, regional director uh, for Europe at Interim. So please, um, the technique. Honorable ministers, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry not to be able to participate in person, but I take great pleasure in recording this message on the launch of the WHO's first ever report on the evidence base for arts and health interventions. Long before humans knew about penicillin or genetics, they created music and art. Our need to express our hopes and fears to create meaning from our surroundings and to share this through artistic creations with others is as profound as our need to quench our thirst or steal our hunger. Should we be surprised that art can improve health? Should we be surprised that art can give us well-being? The famous French painter and sculptor Georges Braque once summarized the relationship between the arts and health in a way that only an artist can. Art, he said, is a wound turned into light. The report we are launching today is a substantial piece of academic work. It brings together hundreds of publications that illustrate the positive effects that arts interventions can have on a range of health challenges across the life course and through the continuum of care. The report shows us how the arts can tackle wicked or complex health challenges such as diabetes, obesity and mental ill health, offering solutions that common medical practice has so far been unable to address effectively. I am particularly pleased that several of the countries in the Nordic region are taking such an active leadership role by demonstrating the practical ways in which cross-sectoral collaboration between culture and health can achieve meaningful results. Sweden has pioneered a culture on prescription scheme in some of its counties, such as Skåne. Denmark is piloting a program of culture vitamins for people with stress, anxiety or depression in several of its municipalities. Finland has instituted a national action program on the arts and culture for health and well-being. And Norway has enacted a public health law and a cultural law that emphasizes the importance of arts in health promotion and care. Collectively, these member states are showing 
how effective arts and health policies can be designed and implemented. Arts and health is not a new er uh, area of research. I'm hopeful that this report will help to move the discussion more firmly into the policy arena and encourage ministries of health to examine some of the policy considerations that the report outlines, such as ensuring the availability and accessibility of arts for health programs within communities, supporting arts and culture organizations in making health and well-being part of their work, and introducing or strengthening referral mechanisms from health or social care facilities to arts programs and activities. Of course, our job is not done and many exciting challenges remain. Further research is needed to understand the health effects of particular arts interventions. More funding is needed to roll out and evaluate arts interventions at scale and across countries and a better understanding of the health economics of arts interventions are still needed if we are to mainstream arts and health. Nevertheless, I'm confident that this report will allow us to change into a higher gear to accelerate research and policy development in this area and to see arts and health interventions for what they are, creative solutions to complex challenges. Honourable Ministers, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you a, suc a successful launch. Thank you. Thank you, Piroska Östling.